In this video, we will be talking about switches, trunks, VLAN tagging, and VLANs. So if you've been doing this for a while, or if you are new to networking, I think there will be something for everyone in this video. What's the difference between a subnet and a VLAN? Come along and let's find out. What is a switch? A switch is a device that connects multiple devices on a local network. A switch uses MAC addresses to decide which port to forward data frames to. Switches operate at layer two of the OSI model. Switches have something called a MAC address table, which is basically a list of MAC addresses and the port that the switch has seen that MAC address on. If a switch does not have an entry for a particular MAC address, it sends the frame to all connected ports except for the one it came from, and this is called flooding. Think about this as the switch saying, So there are two types of frames that switches forward at layer two, unicast and broadcast. A unicast frame goes from one device to another, and this is just regular traffic, like a laptop talking to a server. But a broadcast frame gets forwarded to all connected devices. I mean, everything. The address used for broadcast is all Fs like this. So whenever you see a destination address that looks like this, you know that it's a layer two broadcast, like an ARP request. In a default configuration, switches have all ports set to VLAN 1. What's a VLAN, you ask? Great question. A VLAN, or virtual LAN, is a way to divide a physical network into multiple smaller networks, like creating separate smaller switches within your Layer 2 switch. All of the devices in the same VLAN can communicate, but there's no communication between VLANs. The same goes for broadcasts. They get forwarded to all the connected devices, but only in their own VLAN. This limits the number of broadcasts. That's why a VLAN is also called a broadcast domain. VLANs can improve security, and they are efficient. Think about a broadcast going to 50 computers instead of 100 computers. Let's look at how switches do their job. The four main operations that switches perform are learning, forwarding, filtering, and flooding. A laptop needs to communicate with the server, so it sends a frame to the switch. When the switch receives the frame, it checks the MAC address table for the laptop's MAC address. It's not there, so the switch adds an entry with the MAC address, the port it came from, and the VLAN. This is the learning process. Next, the switch checks its MAC table for the destination MAC address. This time, it finds an entry showing the MAC address is on port 46, so it forwards the frame there. Since the switch only sends the frame to that specific port, this is called filtering. But what if the switch didn't have the destination MAC address in its table? In that case, it floods the frame out to all the ports, except for the one it came from. Remember, it's like the switch saying, I don't know where to send it, so I'm just going to send it everywhere. Now we have three switches, and they each have four VLANs. This is more useful, right? Now our servers on VLAN 100 don't have to all be on the same floor or on the same switch. For our connections between the main switch and the secondary switches, each VLAN on the main switch is linked to its corresponding VLAN on the other two switches. That adds up to 8 cables and a total of 16 ports. This connects all the VLANs, but wow, it sure does burn up a lot of ports, and it really doesn't scale. What if we added 4 more VLANs? Okay, now this is crazy. 8 VLANs total, but to connect them between the three switches, we burn up 32 ports? What? There's got to be a better way to do this. Actually, there is. It's called 802.1Q. It's VLAN tagging. Now, these ports that we're going to set up are called trunk ports. Trunk ports can carry multiple VLANs, so we can get rid of all these extra connections and just use two cables and four ports total, no matter how many VLANs we have. This is much better. When a sending switch sends a frame out a trunk port, it puts a VLAN tag on that frame. This way, the receiving switch can see what VLAN the frame belongs to. When the receiving switch gets the frame, it strips off the tag and treats it like it just received a normal frame on that VLAN. VLAN tags are only present on trunk ports. And for this to work properly, the ports on both ends need to be configured as trunk ports. Otherwise, most switches that receive an unexpected tag frame will just drop that frame. And again, one more thing to remember here is that none of these VLANs are actually talking to each other still. They're isolated. So without a layer three switch or a router, there's still no communications between them. So now let's talk about a possible problem. 
If we connect another port between the top switches here like this, we've given the frames a chance to travel around endlessly or loop. And we call this a switching loop. What happens is that every time the switch receives a broadcast frame or multicast frame and forwards it to all the other ports than the one it was sent on, the next switch will do the same thing. And eventually the same switch gets the packet back and forwards it again, and this never stops. Another name for this is a broadcast storm. If you are familiar with TCP IP, IP has a field called TTL, or time to live, that keeps IP packets from living forever. Every time a packet passes through a router, this TTL field gets decremented by one, and when it reaches zero, the packet's dead and doesn't get forwarded anymore. But layer two frames do not have this mechanism. There's no concept of time to live at layer two. They get transmitted indefinitely. Given a long enough time, it looks like this. And this is not good. It will eventually overwhelm your switches. And this example is a really small loop. Just think about five switches that each have a connection to each other. It can really get a lot worse than this. So how do we solve this looping problem? Or better yet, how can we have redundant paths and still be loop free? The solution is called spanning tree. Simplifying what spanning tree does is it chooses one of your switches to be the root bridge. And you'll really want to select this one manually because spanning tree selection is kind of arbitrary. The root bridge is considered to be the center of your network and all ports on it are set to forwarding. Forwarding means that they can send and receive user data frames. But the real magic of spanning tree is what it does next. On each other switch, spanning tree decides which ports have the best path to the root, and it also sets those to forwarding. Then, for any redundant ports that can also get to the root, it sets those to blocking. And this is how loops are prevented, because a port in a blocking state can't send or receive user data. So notice now how all the packets are flowing and there are no loops. But if your network changes, like if a link goes down, Spanning Tree will recalculate with all the remaining links and work its magic once again. There's a lot more to Spanning Tree and it really needs its own video. If you'd like to see that, drop me a note in the comments. Now let's talk about something that I hinted at in my intro to networking video, and that is layer three switches. Now layer three switches are much like layer two switches, but they have a superpower. They can route data between networks, just like a router. In this illustration, we have three VLANs, 100, 50, and two. We've also assigned an IP address for a VLAN interface to each of them. This means that at layer two, the blue ports are VLAN 100, but now at layer three with the VLAN interface, we've also added a subnet to this VLAN, which is 192.168.100.0 slash 24. For me, when I first started networking, the difference between subnets and VLANs was a hard concept to grasp, but it really doesn't have to be. VLANs are a layer two concept and they apply to switch ports, and they're also called broadcast domains. Subnets are a layer three concept, and in our switch here, the subnet sits on top of the VLAN. Since the switch also routes, we can ping from the server at 192.168.100.10 to the firewall at 192.168.50.254, even though they are on different VLANs and on different subnets. You probably noticed the 100 in the VLAN and the 100 in the IP subnet. Those numbers don't have to be the same like that, but it really makes things easier when they are. So back to our diagram, the server at 192.168.100.10 can talk to the server at 192.168.2.2, .2, even though they're on different VLANs. The main takeaway from this section is that layer three switches can route. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification if you'd like to be notified as soon as new videos come out. Stay tuned for more networking and cybersecurity videos. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.